set up that camera up there. Shoot across. I get it floating with the Seagram's building in the background. Yeah. It's moving now. It's moving really well. That's good crane work. So your commission at Libra House, the Hello Kitty, what's behind all of that? Well, Hello Kitty is a Japanese merchandising icon. She has no TV show, no comic book. She exists only as plastic stuff. She doesn't have history that can sort of slow down her message of just friendship and love. That's Kitty and Miffy, and they're in a relationship. And then my melody is kind of like an enlightened Buddhist character. She's still got baggage, but she's in a sort of enlightened state. And then behind them is Hello Kitty with a wind up and she's under the gun, the corporate crunch, trying to express her creativity. I didn't realize she was under so much duress up there. Tell me a little bit what it was like growing up in suburban Connecticut. Uh, Martha Stewart did your bar mitzvah. Growing up in Connecticut, art wasn't part of my culture. Shopping was. You'd never painted as a kid or drawn stuff? Well, there was one piece that I did as a child. My dad wanted this camera, but it was really expensive. So in school, I made the one that he wanted out of clay, and I gave it to him. It said Nikon on it. I had ski equipment, but it wasn't the best, so I painted better labels on it. And conflicted, it sounds like. I was very conflicted, and I was always trying to manage these feelings. So when Prada Death Camp sort of came up, I thought one plus one equals a million. That piece was very controversial, and then Prada's become a big uh, supporter of your work. What was your intention with that? It looked like I was dismissing the Holocaust. In fact, what I was really trying to do was associate the loss of identity that comes with international brands and globalism. Every time McDonald's pops up, you lose a mom and pop store. Trying to eliminate this culture for a cleaner, more perfect place is, you know, in a way akin to some of the things that were going on in the Holocaust. And you're, you're not afraid to just put your foot right into the most sensitive topics. And I thought of not doing it because someone might be upset. But then I, I, that's not a way to live. We build everything with love and haste, build it quickly and then repair it. And that way you, sh you see all the mistakes, the scuffs, the screws, the glue drips, and all of these things that are evidence of the construction. I love waffles and I love bikes. Putting them together just seemed right. And um, those chickens produce an egg a day, which makes the waffles a lot better. Now, but if you look closely, you'll see that the bike's fully weaponized. You use handguns and, and weapons in a lot of your work. What is the interest in the guns? Well, weapons forever have been a sort of clearest expression of technology and craftsmanship. This piece is the history of hardcore punk music in America. <laughs> This box has hundreds of cassettes of all kinds of music, but it's largely music of the African diaspora. When rock and roll was becoming popularized, it was demonized as Negro music. There was a lot of fear around it. Tell me about the whale. The whale is, a, to me, a pure symbol of good. I just wanted to make something that wasn't a critique, a social judgment or anything. So who's more friendly, the whale or Hello Kitty? Who's more friendly? Yeah, you said that. You're making me choose? He said the whale was goodness and Hello Kitty was friendship, so... Well, I, I think Hello Kitty is a little more complex because Hello Kitty, as well as representing friendship, also represents the purity of brand identity. But isn't she then like Paris Hilton, who didn't, you know, doesn't have any accomplishments, she's just a brand, people? Maybe. Maybe there's... You could, you could draw that. I couldn't possibly comment.